All right, all right. This is the I Am Rappaport podcast coming live from the gloom tomb. All right, this is a Friday, five minutes of funk, freestyle, but I'm going to do a little bit more than five minutes. I feel it because there's so much, so much to talk about, so much to talk about. I got a, uh, I got a fucking 11 page manifesto was sent to me uh, by somebody on the internet who said that uh, me and G Monetti and the whole rapper pack group crew, all of us were insensitive and uneducated fucks. That was a word that was used. You're uneducated fucks. I don't know if they were actually calling me an uneducated fuck or they were mocking me because that's sometimes the way I speak. But they, one of the things they said that I was an uneducated, uh, me and G Moody were uneducated fucks. And they sent me an 11 page fucking manifesto about the, 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 the rights and wrongs, things you could say, not say, terms, fucking cheat sheet. Basically, an 11 page cheat sheet on dealing with the gay, lesbian, transgender community. And I'm gonna read that off to you people because uh, I feel like it's my obligation to do so to educate myself even though I was called an uneducated fuck by this, by this person who, who was not included in the rapper pack. For those of you who don't know, uh, the rapper pack is the people who are fucking crazy enough to be listening to the I Am Rapport podcast, which happens to be a worldwide fucking phenomenon. Okay, so we're going to get to that. Uh, I, I wanted to, I've been asked a lot about my nephew, Duncan, who has made uh, some classic appearances on this show, the Iron Rapport podcast. He's, uh, he loves hip-hop, uh, and you know he's been on the, the podcast a bunch of times. But uh, apparently, my, my nephew Duncan, who's 12, might be 13, I don't know, I think he's 12, he got his phone taken away indefinitely because this fucking kid uh, <clears throat> was caught, uh, uh, well, not caught, it was like after the fact, but he admitted to trying to smoke herbs okay now this is how fucking dumb these kids are he he thought he, he i guess you know he heard that weed was called herb so this motherfucker took the actual herbs out of the 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 uh the the cabinet at my brother's house him and his friend i don't know like sesame herbs and mixed herbs and you know all kinds of herbs i don't fact check here i'm just i'm going off the he tried to r- smoke herbs like a fucking dumbass. Tried to actually smoke actual herbs, thinking it would get him high. He's lucky he didn't fucking burn his face off. So uh, it, those of you who love Duncan like I do and who love him, he's a, he's a fixture of the Iron Rapport podcast. He's got his phone taken away indefinitely. He's leaving me voicemails because he's able to get his phone for like an hour uh, on the weekend to call, you know, his family. Uh, but, but other than that, he's shut down. He got shut down for smoking herbs. So that's what's going on with, uh, with him. And, uh, you know, my mom, my mom, uh, she's injured, got kicked by a horse. She likes to ride horses. And uh, one of these fucking beasts, one of them fucking turned on her for some reason and kicked her. My mother. Could have been really bad. Uh, so she's, uh, she's recovering hopefully fast, but she got a, you know, lacerated liver or kidney. I don't know. It was a liver. I think it was a liver. Yeah, it was a liver. Lacerated in a fucking, you know, small broken bone and all kind of shit. You know, so, so you know, me and my brother, <clears throat> you know, we wanted to go see her. And I, you know, we're going to go take a baseball bat to this fucking horse, you know, because kicked my mom. And she said, I, you can't take it. I said, well, then we'll shoot the fucking thing. You know, how, how could one of your horses turn on you and kick you? She said, it didn't turn on me. Da, you're not doing that. You're crazy. You know, and I said, I, I'm crazy. This, 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 this fucking, you got these 2,000 pound horses running around. You, you, you give them cr- carrots and peanuts. And you train them and you give them fucking hay and grass and they live a, a nice life, and then one of them flips out on you and kicks you? Fuck that shit. You know, I send the motherfucker thing back down to, like, to Florida, you know? On a one-way, one-way train back down to Florida, you know? And then be like, oh, no, we only got a one-way ticket. He, he's not coming back. 
But this is my rule about <clears throat> pets in general. You see, I love dogs. I love dogs. I don't like cats, okay? But, but you know, I, I, I would never hurt a cat and... You know, I would, I would, I would help a wounded cat, but I just don't want him as my own personal pets. Like if I ever saved a wounded cat, I would save it outside of my house, and then it would have to get the fuck out. Like I'd make sure it went to a safe home, and you know, was taken care of properly. But dogs, you know, I, I've rescued uh, two dogs, and I had a pure breed. My first dog was a pure breed. He was a freak, uh, chocolate lab, Frankie, the, the the fucking dog. But 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 in general. The rule about dogs and animals in my household and, and just my theory about dogs is about animals in general, but specifically dogs. If the shit hits the fan and the dog got hype and wanted to fucking try me, my rule is that there should be no question, no concern that if the dog tried to fucking round and get hype and tried to attack me or someone in my house or god forbid well my kids are big now they're fucking they're huge uh but it, it tried to attack them when they were smaller or one of their friends or you know a babysitter or or, or anybody that the, the, that that person specifically being me because i'm the one with this fear should be able to kick the fucking shit out of the animal meaning that if if you got into a fight with a dog, like if a dog attacked you, I know that sounds crazy. If you got into a fight with a dog, but you know these dogs they attack people, and 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 I want to be able to know without a shadow of a doubt that if a dog that is in my house tries to get jiggy with it, I I know that I'm gonna be able to fucking do what I gotta do to get the union back. See, I threw that in there. That was a quote from Hoffa, Jack Nicholson. Armand DeSante, one of my favorite quotes, uh, Armand DeSante says, what are you going to do, man? He said, I'm going to do what I got to do. And then Armand DeSante goes, what's that mean? And he said, I'm going to do what I got to do to get the union back. That's a fucking segue for your ass right there. But, but, but the point being is that like, like I have a mutt. He's about 55, 60 pounds. Probably should only be 50 pounds. He's a fat fuck. You know, I spoil the shit out of him. He's a great dog, Wheezy, that I got from a pound in, in, in Louisiana. Hence the name Wheezy. Not like Young Wheezy, although he's from New Orleans too. I got a, the dog in New Orleans, but it was like Wheezy, like because first it was, I don't remember what the name was first, but anyway, Wheezy can't do shit. Wheezy can't do, like when my house got broken into, Wheezy didn't do shit, all right? So I know if you're not going to do shit to somebody robbing the house, you ain't doing shit to me, Wheezy, but I love Wheezy. He's fucking great, And um, but one time I was, I was dog-sitting this dog we 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 rescued uh, a pit bull was in my house and I never was totally comfortable with this motherfucker. You know, he's like a a real pit bull and he was always cool with me. He would lay on me. We watch the games together. You know, and uh, but he gave me a look one time. You know, like not a kind of look that makes you comfortable. You know, like vibed you out. Like like the dog was in my house. I'm taking care of this rescue dog and he's looking at me like. You know, like, what's up? And I, it made me very uncomfortable. Okay, and then uh, a week and a half later was Easter. And I was, I took the fucking dog uh, to, 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 to a lady friend's house. Uh, and there was a bunch of ladies there, and mostly ladies. I don't think, there was a couple of guys there. But at the time, there wasn't that many guys there. But it wasn't that, like, some kind of freaky shit. It was Easter, right? And, uh... The fucking dog, the same dog. I don't remember what his name was. It had, I, I, I don't, he didn't have a name. He was a rescue dog. So you'd like experiment with names. Like one day he'd be like, hey, Bugsy. And then the next day he'd be like, uh, you know, uh, hey, Tyson. You know, and then the next day he'd be like, uh, you know, yo, Rakim. Like you give it, try any fucking name. The dogs just stay. I don't I'm not keeping this. Maybe I'll keep the dog. Well, anyway, but this fucking dog, this pit bull, they're more like a real pit bull. You know, he was real cool, but like I said, I got a funny vibe from him coming out of the shower. I wasn't naked, loaf out, but I had a towel wrapped around me, but the motherfucker was standing outside the door when I was taking a shower, almost like, yo, what the fuck, took you so long, or yo, it's my turn, get the fuck out. If something was up with this dog. But anyway, two weeks later, a week later, 10 days later, at an Easter party, there was a ham, there was a chicken, you know, there was cooked not like running around, you know, and, and uh, it was a, a ham, it was chicken, it was food, macaroni and cheese. And, you know, everybody was cool. And, oh, the dog's good, he's good. And, you know, he seems to be, you know, uh, you know, adjusting good. Yeah, he's sweet, he's sweet. And I'm like, that's saying anything. 
This motherfucking dog jumps on the table and takes a half a ham and the fucking ham bone, like the fucking whole ham's in his mouth. So everybody's chasing around like, ah, get it, get it, get it. And, and then the motherfucker cooped up into the corner. And uh, when I went to go get it, he gave me that look again and a fucking Rrr. And he had that fucking ham in his mouth. And then, and then my friend tried to get it and, 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 and he gave her the same shit. And she was like, I'll just take it out of his mouth. I said, don't fucking take it out of his mouth because it's in his fucking mouth and he's giving me that fucking look. And, you know, I don't think that dog's going to give up that ham. And it was, you know, he was looking like, I'm going to finish this ham. And if anybody wants to try some shit, you know, get ready because the shit's going to pop off. It's Easter fucking Sunday. I'm a Jew celebrating Easter, Easter Sunday. And this, this fucking dog, you know, is, is, is getting fucking, you know, thuggish ruggish. So uh, then we tried to like pry his fucking mouth open with like a, the, the side of a broomstick and he just wasn't having it. And that was, that, was the, that was the end of my association with the dog because I had seen enough. Because it's like if Mike Tyson came into your house on Easter and decided to take the whole fucking ham for himself. And when people were like, hey, Mike, uh, you know, it's Easter, you in a share. And he was like, hey, fuck that. I ain't fucking giving up shit. You know, and then you're like, well, you know, but it's Easter. Mickey. I don't give a fuck what it is, motherfucker. I, I know it's fucking Easter. You ain't getting any of this fucking ham. All right, well, Mike, that's cool. Um, Mike's not ever coming back over for Easter. Okay, and, and, and actually, I wouldn't invite him back over when he was the hangover Mike and the sober Mike and the Mike Tyson that, you know, does, uh, you know, uh, you know, the, the fun stuff. He would just, I just wouldn't, he wouldn't be coming back over. Like anybody, if I'm just using Mike as an example, cause you know, he kind of has that temperament. Like you're like, whoa, oh, you know, you don't want the switch to, you know, to turn on. And this dog, the, the switch did turn on. So anyway, so I was like, I had enough. I seen enough. I'm cool. That fucking thing's not coming home with me. So she kept the fucking dog. Uh, and she had another dog that was like a half pit bull. So these two fucking dogs, they got along like pigs and shit. Cut to a couple of weeks after that. When she's come, she comes back into our house, I'm getting this all secondhand. She calls me. I'm saying she. This is, this is a lady friend. She calls me up. She's like, there's a big, there's blood everywhere. I'm like, what the fuck? What the fuck? The two dogs had a fucking brawl when she was gone. And when she came back, she said it was like CSI, like a fucking crime scene. And that fucking pit bull, it was white and black, has blood all over it. And the other one's like all fucked up and they fucked each other up. But the, you know, the Mike Tyson dog won the fight. They both fucked each other up. But I was right. My instinct was right. That motherfucker was sizing me up when I came out of the shower and was like looking to go take a fucking bath. And, and uh, you know, but, but, but it brings me back to the, my, my point is, is that when you're housing these animals, dogs, these people with the snakes and the real dummies who bring home like, you know, venomous snakes and, you know, 17 foot cobras and this one and that one. And it, oh, and it kills ducks and it does this and that and horses. I don't fuck with any of these animals that I can't beat in a fight. OK, and unfortunately, my mom got kicked by one of these bastards. And, uh, you know, she's in the fucking hospital out in Jersey uh, recovering, you know, with, 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 with some some serious problems. I mean, it's not it's not life threatening, but, you know, it's it's some real issues. So that, that's, that's where, you know, that's what I've been dealing with this week. You know, it's not just all about you guys listening. You know, some of it has to do with me. A kid. I love the fucking Rapper Pack. I, I, should we be called the Rapper Pack? Somebody gave us that name and then someone was like, well, you shouldn't be called the Rapper Pack because Howard Stern's people are called the Whack Pack. But I didn't come up with the Rapper Pack. Someone didn't. I was like, that makes sense. Yeah, Rapper Posse, that sounds, that's corny Posse, Posse. Uh, I don't know. I, I don't know. I like rap a pack for now. If, if somebody comes up with something better, yo, send it to me, tweet it to us, uh, Instagram it, do something with it. Um, another thing that, uh, I wanted to, uh, talk about before I, 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 I get into this, this manifesto, the gay, lesbian, transgender manifesto, um, is, 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 uh, you know, I was thinking, I was thinking about, uh, about fantasy football and, uh, you know, you know, I play in this fantasy football league. If you don't know, I play in the 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 Stern, the Howard Stern 
fantasy football league. I don't think it's called the Howard Stern wrap up fantasy football league, but Howard and Robin don't play in it. So it's basically just the rest of the schlubs on the Stern show. It's, it's a uh, fucking Steve Brandano, uh, Scott Salem, the engineer, uh, fucking, uh, John Hine, of course, it's Gary Delabonte, aka Fafa Fui, aka De- Gary Della Ba 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 uh, They got fucking Matt Matt Berry. And if you don't know who Matt Berry is, Matt Berry is like the kind of the guy that infused fantasy football into popular culture. He's one of the the main people that did that. He wrote a book, and he, and, he, and he was the first ESPN fantasy football a- analyst. Analyst, fuck you. Fuck you. You know what? Fuck you. I'm going off the top of the dome here. I'm not even drinking any fucking water or Snapple or coffee or anything. My mouth is is dry, and I said the word wrong. It doesn't mean I don't know what the fuck it is. But <clears throat> So Matt Berry's in it. Who else is in this fucking league? Uh, all these fucks. Elise Ann, a porn star. And, and last year, <clears throat> I'm just giving the people like we know we know, but some people don't know. There's new fans listening to this shit. So last year on the Howard Stern Show, Fantasy Football League, uh, I beat the fucking shit out of Matt Barry twice. I fucked him where he lives twice, two times. My my team played him twice, and my team fucked him twice. Uh, but then Gary Delabonte, his team actually won. So Gary came in first, I came in second, and and Matt Barry came in third. And the rest of the schmucks, uh, who cares? You're, you're like no one even. Rem- the only reason why I remember third is because it was Matt Barry, and I, and I put him in third place. I, I fucked him where he lives. And, and, you know, every single day, literally, at least one person, no bullshit, will come up to me <clears throat> and they will say, they always start about, yo, I love you on the wrap-up show. And I love going on the wrap-up show. I, I love the Howard Stern. I love the Howard Stern show. I've been listening to it since I was a kid in New York City um, when it was on, I think, 92.3 or WPLJ or WNBC. I mean, it moved around a few times, but it was always a fixture in, in my life as far as I can remember. So being a part of the rap, and I've been a guest on the show, whatever, not, not recently, because now I'm not fucking cool. I can't be, a, I haven't been, you know, asked to sit on the couch with, with Howard Stern. But that's fine. So anyway, last year, these motherfuckers asked me to play in the, in the, in the, in the rap of sh- the, the Stern Show Fantasy League. And I, I did it, and my son and his friend did all the picking and decision making. Okay, so Mr. Fucking Hot Dick, Mr. Hot Shot, Mr. Fucking Know It All, Matt Berry, he thought, oh, he's like, well, you know, uh, you, you don't know anything. Your kids, I go, it doesn't make a fucking difference, fucko. We're, we're going to beat you and we're going to fucking beat you bad. And we did. We beat his ass. And so what? I lost to fucking Gary. You know, if it was so, well, it was so what? I lost to a fucking ape. I mean, you know, I've seen fucking apes do sign language and smoke cigarettes and play guitars. Any fucking monkey can get lucky and, and, and win in fantasy football. You know, I, I, that's not a, a, a big accomplishment for like a simian. You go on the internet, press apes do fantastic things. There's apes fucking driving cars. I don't know, all kind of shit. It's, it's an ongoing thing. It's been for years and years. They know how to talk. They take care of your kids. I don't know, the fucking, so big deal at this fucking Delabonte one, this, this gorilla, this, this fuck. But every day, Someone will come up to me and say, you're great on the wrap-up show. Or they might not even say that. They might just say, fucking kick their ass next year in fantasy football, Mike. Take fucking Gary down and take that fuck Matt Berry down. Every day, at least one person says it. In New York, it's definitely at least two or three times a day. I'm in Los Angeles lately, um, right now. And, and, and the last two days, it's happened to me. Uh, I was at a party and, and minding my business and someone was like, I love I love the Stern show. I'm a huge fan. And I loved you on there with the fantasy shit. And you better fucking win. You're the people's fucking choice. You're the people's champ. And it dawned on me that I am the people's champ. And and I am going to get you motherfuckers. Okay. And, And he said to me, he said... You going against Matt Berry, it's like you're the, you're, the, you're the regular guy and he's the fucking hot shot. He wasn't using this type of language, but he said he's the hot shot. He's the face of fantasy football. And you taking him down is like David and Goliath. And you got to beat him. And this is a Saturday night. You know, I'm feeling good. I'm at this party. I'm not even thinking about fucking Matt Berry or Fafa Fui or John Hine or fucking JD or Steve Brandan. I don't even know these fucking people's names. These fucking guys' names. Ben Bardo, that motherfucker, he shitted on me last year, said we were friends, and then fucking sucked Matt Berry off and made some trades with him, left me hanging. Friend my ass, a fucking friend. I wasn't no David Schwimmer, 
you motherfucker. I wasn't no fucking Lisa Kudrow or Jen Aniston, you motherfucker. Ben Barta, you fucked me. And uh, J- JD, he's shot. God, these people over at the Howard Stern Show, they're fucking... I mean, it sounds like fun and games, but then when you really get close, these motherfuckers are they're burnt out and they're shot. So, so I realized that... And then the next day, the next day, I was having a really fucking shitty day. It was about 11.45 and I was going to get ice cream. So at 11.45 at night, if you're going to get ice cream... For me, that's a shitty day. Some people might think that's a good day, but I wasn't in a good place. I was going through some shit, family shit. My mom got kicked by the fucking horse, and, and, uh, and I'm walking through the parking lot carrying four pints. It wasn't even ice cream. It's Talenti, uh, fuck is it called? Talenti Gelato. They sell it. It's really good. Listen, Talenti, big fan of you. Big, big, big fan of you. It's not ice cream and, and, and gelato. It's, like, oh, it's, it's not yogurt. It's really good. It tastes like ice cream, but without the stomach ache. They got all kind of flavors. Check it out. Talenti gelato. The shit is no joke. No disrespect to the other ice creams and, you know, those people. And, and you know, if you want to sponsor us, that's cool. Ben and Jerry's hint, hint. But right now I'm in a Talenti phase. So anyway, I'm walking back to my car. I didn't even get a bag. I, I self-checked out and I, I'm carrying four tubs. I have shame. Four fucking tubs, four pints of Talenti yogurt. And this guy comes up to me in the parking lot of pavilions uh, on Vine and Melrose at 11.45 at night, which is like, you might as well be, it's like a flashback to Times Square circa 1984. Anything could happen in this fucking parking lot. It's pitch black. It's 11.45 uh, on on a fucking Sunday night or a Monday night. And this guy, late at night, I'm having a shitty day. He goes, Mike, Fucking love you on the wrap-up show. You got to take those motherfuckers down next year. And I said, thank you very much. I've been having a bad day. Which brings me to this fucking podcast. I want to let you fucking guys know, okay? Matt Berry, Gary, the whole fucking, the whole lot of you. I'm coming for you to fuck you down, to bury you, Okay? I'm coming after you. I'm going to get each one of you week by week and fuck you. Okay? I'm going to be like I'm going to be like that enema, okay? I'm going to be like a fucking enema in your ass every fucking Sunday. If I play you on a Monday, I'm going to be like a fucking enema in your ass on a Monday night football game. If I play you on a Thursday, I'm that fucking enema. I'm coming. Okay? Rappaport's delight, aka there will be blood is coming. No one else is thinking about fantasy football in the beginning of June, okay? No one else is is going through stats, and I do fact check for fantasy football. I am preparing, and my son and his friend, they are preparing. We are coming to fuck you up. And and the sad thing about the Stern Show League, and I've said this before, and I'll say it again until until shame pushes them to try to do something better. The the pot, the, the amount of money that we play for is 600 fucking measly dollars the howard stern wrap-up show fantasy football league they could only put together a 600 hundred dollar pot and that's because each one of us put in a hundred dollars and i was asked by two people two fucking people yo you want to get in this league it's big stakes and first i was like yeah then i said no 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 no, i can't do it and it's not about winning or losing it's that the emotional commitment the 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 amount of time and emotion that I put into focusing on trying to fuck every single one of the motherfuckers in the Howard Stern Fantasy Football League is too important to me. And I feel like if I can't give that emotional commitment to be that fucking enema, okay, to be that fucking colonoscopy, every time you play me, you motherfuckers, you're going to know that I am that colonoscopy that you have to wake up and go to early in the fucking morning. Okay, live it, think about it, breathe it. Okay, I am Rappaport, aka there will be blood. And you say, Wait, well, there will be blood. Were they gonna bleed out of their head? No, use your imagination. There's other holes they might bleed out of. This is the I Am Rappaport podcast. The I Am Rappaport podcast is sponsored by Casper Mattresses, Casper.com. It's an award winning sleep startup. Go to Casper.com. $50 off purchase of any size mattress. Put in the code Rappaport, R-A-P-A-P-O-R-T, Casper Mattress in New York City. You can return the mattress within 100 days. That's a guarantee. 
the, the, the bed will be delivered between two to five days anywhere in the United States and Canada. Same day delivery in New York City. Uh, a bike messenger could bring it. New technology. The bed will come in a fucking box. Casper.com. The promo code is Rappaport. You get $50 off the mattress. We do not plug. We do not support. We do not take sponsorship from anything we have not tried and we are not passionate about. 450%. All right, this is the I Am Rappaport podcast. Uh, I'm flying solo. My man G Moody is not with me. Nobody's with me. I'm in here going, uh, going for self. Doing it, doing the damn thing alone in the gloom tomb. Crazy week, good week. Uh, you know, big, big things going on. NBA finals have finally fucking started. Okay, but we're going to discuss that at another time. I, I, like I said, I got this 11 page fucking manifesto. You could get it. Go to, I'll, I'll, I'll post it. When, I, when, I, when this comes out, I'll post it. Some, I don't even going to give these fuckers no, no, no. Somebody fucking made an 11, pan, 11 page manifesto, and the title is How to Talk About Caitlyn Jenner, a guy to speaking and write about, writing about transgender people. Now, <clears throat> when the fucking, when the Jews were freed by Nazi Germany, by, by, by the Nazis, they didn't, they didn't have a fucking 11 page manifesto to ha- how to talk to the Jews after the fucking monstrosities and, and atrocities they went through, okay? I, I just want to say that. When, 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 when black men are being kicked in the face by, by a certain faction of, uh, uh, you know, the police, like, like a day at the beach, they don't have a fucking 11-page manifesto on how to talk about that, all right? When, 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 a, when a guy goes to jail for, for rape for 19 years and then he's proven innocent... And comes out of jail, that's somebody you should that should have a man of how to talk to a person like that. That's going through a major fucking trauma. Do you get what I'm saying? That's that's going through a major thing. A, a person who was put in jail for 23 years, they're given tons of money, but but how do you talk to them? I don't see any manifestos on dealing with, with people that have been through that. Or 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 an innocent person who is beaten, beaten, get the shit beaten out of them by, by a police officer. And I'm not, this is not, I want to make sure you guys know, yo, the I Am Rapport podcast, me, Michael Rapport, support the police. It is a tough job. I'm not police bashing, but we all know there are some policemen, just like there are some actors, there are some basketball players, there are some doctors, there are some gardeners, there are some, you know, garbage men that are not good people. Okay, they're just not good people. So I'm, I'm specifically talking about that. So I got this fucking manifesto and it's 11 fucking pages and it has ha- all these terms and definitions, sex, gender identity, gender expression, sexual orientation, transden- transgender specific terminology, transsexual, trans, transgender man, transgender woman, crossdresser. Fucking, it's got notes, transition, sexual reassignment surgery, sexual... Gender disorder, gender dysphoria, I can't even pronounce, cisgender, gender non-conforming, gender queer, transgender names, pronoun usage and descriptions. Whenever possible, ask transgender people which pronoun they would like you to use. If it's not possible to ask a transgender person which pronoun is preferred, use the pronoun that is consistent with the person's appearance and gender expression. For example, if a person wears a dress and uses... The name Susan, feminine pronouns are usually appropriate. Usually. Are you fucking kidding me here? The point is that what I'm saying is it's like, this is like, it's like, it's like the hipster fucking shit. It's like the, it's like the trendy fucking new, you know, uh, unusual. Is that a bad word? I don't even know what the fuck to word I could say and can't say. There's 11 fucking pages of problematic tr- transgender, preferred transgender, problematic trans. Genderism. There's so much shit here. If I was able to study and understand this shit, you think that I would be doing a fucking podcast for a living? You think I would be? Fu- I'd be fucking solving crimes in the Middle East or, or saving people's lives and diseases and fucking stopping earthquakes. No one can fucking get through this shit. Defamatory words: tranny, a she a he she, it, or a shim. If you say these words: a tranny, a she a he. A he, she, an it, or a shim, 
You might fucking dehumanize the transgender people and should not be used in the mainstream media. And you could get fucking, basically saying you could get cut for doing that shit. You could get fucked up. Defamatory bathroom bill, a term created and used by far right extremists to oppose non discrimination laws that protect transgender people. I don't give a fuck when it, there's no one listening to the Iron Rapport podcast that can make fucking heads or tail of any of this shit. I, hopefully there's some smart people that can make heads or tails of all this shit, but I'm just going to go through some more of the terms like the, the, the what's right, what's wrong, transgender specific terminology, okay, transgender, it says it's an adjective, okay, it needs that, so you know we're getting into some shit here when it's saying the, 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 the part of speech, an umbrella term for people whose transgender identity and or gender expression differs from what's typically associated with the sex that they were assigned with at birth. What the fuck? People under the transgender umbrella, now they got an umbrella. They got their own umbrella. May describe themselves using one or more uh, wide... I haven't read this. You Listen, I don't even read fucking scripts, and I'm reading this shit. Unlike transgender, here's a good one. Transsexual is not an umbrella term. They got fucking more umbrellas. More fucking umbrellas. The, the, the gay and lesbian transgender community's got fucking more umbrellas than a rainy fucking Tuesday. Trans, it's another term, used as a shorthand to mean transgender or transsexual. A transgender man, people who were assigned female at birth, but identify and live as man, use this term to describe themselves. Transgender woman, people who are assigned, that's a, a cross-dresser, okay? This is a cross-dresser. While anyone may wear clothes associated with a different sex, the term cross-dresser is typically used to refer to a heterosexual man who occasionally wears clothes, makeup, and accessories culturally associated with women. See, listen, listen, with the political correctness, I can't, I can't do it. Cross-dressers do not wish to permanently change their sex or live full-time as a woman. Replaces the term transvestite. I don't know. I don't know. And then there's, please note, halfway through this, transgender women are not cross-dressers or drag queens. Drag queens are men, typically gay men, who dress like women for the... Listen, the fucking point of this manifesto and the point of me reading it is if you motherfuckers think that everybody's going to say and do the right fucking thing with all this craziness being in, in, infused rapidly into mainstream culture you're out of your fucking mind okay and 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 i said it before you know if if the fucking if 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 the gay and lesbian community and i know that the gay and lesbian community and the transgender community has a sense of humor and if you can't have a sense of humor about yourself or if the sense of humor can only be you know if you're making the jokes well then fuck it i don't want to be a part of it Okay, because this is the Iron Rapport podcast. I break balls. I fucking threw my mother under the bus on this fucking, this episode. I probably said some shit about my kids. I definitely thought about saying things about my ex-wife, but I didn't because lawyers might get involved. But the point is, the fucking point is, is that, listen, don't be so fucking sensitive, ladies or men, whatever you chose to chose choose to be now. Bullying, not accepted by the I Am Rapport podcast. Fucking, you know, violence towards Gay, lesbian, anybody. Straight, gay, fucking anything. I'm not with that shit either. Violence while filming it? Fucking just jump off a train track. Right into the fucking train. Okay? Okay? Is that me? Well, you're telling people... No, listen. These people are fucking beating up people and then filming it. I'm in here by myself. Talking to myself. This is what it's come to. It's the Iron Rapport podcast. I don't know. I don't know. I, 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 I'm sweating and... Uh, Shit, I don't know what else. I, I know that uh, a woman, and I think it was Utah or Florida, that's usually where th these things happen. She, uh, <clears throat> she was cutting, huh, this is so fucking gross, her, her, her nails and her skin shavings, like from, from her fingernails and her feet, and, and putting it, she was caught, this sick, sick fuck, real sick fuck, caught by her family. She was, she was putting it in her family's drinks, like their soda and their milk, and 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 I don't know how they caught on to it. Was it like they suspected it for a long time, or did they, you know, catch it in one night and then like you're like, like fuck, you're drinking like your, your 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 diet coke or your your wine or whatever the fuck you're drinking, and then you realize that there's like fingernails and skin in it. 
but this sick fuck, she 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 was she was caught doing that and, and you know arrested and I mean you know like where's Aunt you know Mary? Oh well, she's in jail. Well, what what would she do? Well, you know what she did was you know I mean it's really fucking disgusting, really fucking disgusting. Uh, the C I Rapport podcast and we out. American Giant sponsors the I Am Rappaport podcast. Go to American-Giant.com. Check it out. T-shirts, sweatshirts, American-made, American-manufactured, really good quality, soft, rugged, hoodies, sweatpants, all of it. American-Giant.com. American-Giant.com. The slogan for American Giant that we created is American Giant Clothing. Champion. Can't fuck with this shit, yo.